In Anton Chekhov's 1889 short tale The Bet, a banker and a young lawyer wager on whether the death sentence is better or worse than life in prison after engaging in a discussion. A banker walks his study on a dark fall night, recalling a party he held 15 years ago, where he discussed with distinguished guests, many of whom are journalists or academics, whether lethal penalty is more humanitarian than life imprisonment. Most visitors oppose death penalty, arguing that it is antiquated and unethical in a Christian society and that it should be replaced with life imprisonment. The banker, on the other hand, believes that death by lethal injection is more merciful than life imprisonment since it kills instantly rather than gradually. They're both unethical, says an anonymous visitor, since the state doesn't have the authority to take away something it can't return. A young lawyer agrees that both sentences are wrong but prefers life imprisonment because it's better to live somehow than not to exist at all. The banker draws the attention when he bangs his fists on the table in frustration, and says he's willing to make a two million ruble wager on the lawyer's inability to remain imprisoned for five years. An equally enraged lawyer extends the punishment to 15 years. In front of a large group of people, the wager is confirmed. Over dinner, the banker prods the lawyer further, encouraging him to pull out before it's too late. He makes the point that the lawyer would be throwing away three or four of the greatest years of his life, but he stops short of saying much more than that since he considers it very unlikely that the lawyer would remain in jail for any longer. In addition, he points out to the lawyer that being imprisoned voluntarily is considerably more difficult mentally than being imprisoned for legal reasons. Back in the present, the banker regrets placing this wager since it has resulted in no gains. The lawyer has lost 15 years of his life. It seems the banker will lose 2 million rubles, and no one will have learned whether the death penalty or life in prison is better. A garden wing of the banker's mansion was used 15 years ago to keep the lawyer who was being closely monitored. He is not allowed to leave interact with anybody or hear human voices, nor get letters or newspapers. Writing letters, reading books, playing the piano, drinking wine, and smoking cigarettes are all permitted activities for him. Additionally, he has a little window through which he may write letters requesting for goods like books or wines. The banker will not be required to pay the two million rubles if he attempts to flee. The lawyer had a hard time at first getting used to his newfound isolation and boredom in prison. When it comes to entertainment, he prefers to play the piano all day and night and read novels of a light nature, but he abstains from drinking alcohol and smoking because he believes they would make him need things he can't have and contaminate the air in his chamber. In the second year, the lawyer gives up playing the piano and devotes himself to literature. He starts playing music again and requesting alcohol around the fifth year. He spends a lot of time lazing about throughout that year. He is not a reader, and when he does write, he rips it up and weeps over it. Reading more books than he can carry becomes an obsession for the lawyer in the sixth year. In a letter to the banker he shares his satisfaction at learning to comprehend the geniuses of the world in six different languages. His letter further begs the banker to fire a rifle in the garden if no flaws are found in his translations, and the banker complies with his request. The lawyer only reads the New Testament in his tenth year. He reads recklessly and indiscriminately throughout the course of the following two years, concentrating on everything from Byron and Shakespeare to the scientific sciences. He was swimming in the water, amid shattered bits of debris, passionately snatching one piece after another in his effort to preserve his life, he says of his reading style. The elderly banker worries that if the lawyer wins the wager, he would become rich, get married, and live a fulfilling life like he did in the past, while he will become a beggar. In the end, the banker believes that killing the lawyer is the only option. Everybody is fast asleep at this hour, which is three in the morning. The rain is falling and the wind is howling. 
There is no response when he shouts for the watchman. In this terrible weather, he thinks the watchman has sought cover and gone asleep. The banker believes that if he can bring himself to do it, the watchman will be the first person to be accused of the crime. There is no watchman in the banker's hall, as the banker discovers. Even though he bangs on the lawyer's window, the prisoner doesn't move. He approaches the door with caution. Skeleton like, the lawyer has tight drawn skin, a yellowish hue, and sunken cheekbones. His appearance is so gaunt that the banker finds it difficult to look at him, even though he is just 40 years old. On the table next to him is a piece of paper. Even though the banker knows he could easily dispose of this half dead monster, he chooses to read the note instead. His freedom and right to mingle with others would be granted the next day, according to the letter. However, he has one more thing to say to the banker before he departs. First and foremost, he despises all of the world's benefits that he learned about through the books he read. After 15 years of studying earthly existence, the lawyer claims that he has lived everything he's read about, he drank wine, performed songs, hunted animals, loved beautiful women and toured the world, despite never having seen any of it in person. For example, he has plunged himself into abysses, performed miracles and demolished whole towns. He has even invaded nations. The lawyer writes that all the learning from the books has been distilled into a little lump in his cranium. Even though he's become a genius, the man despises learning and literature since they're nothing more than empty words to him. He says that death will take away everything that is intelligent, proud, and lovely. According to the lawyer, everyone is deranged and misinformed. Because they mistake ugliness for beauty and deception for truth, they fail to appreciate what is genuinely lovely and holy. They've exchanged the hope of paradise for a complete but fictitious existence on earth, and he has no idea why. There are certain things in life that are more important than money, thus the lawyer is willing to give up two million rubles since money, like everything else, is fleeting. However, he upholds the conditions of the wager by claiming that he would leave his cell five hours early so that the banker is legally excused from paying him, which ends the letter. The banker is now sobbing. Before departing, he kisses the lawyer on the cheek and puts the letter down. He has a low opinion of himself and is unable to sleep since he is so upset by his uncontrollable sobs. When the banker wakes up the following morning, the watchman tells him that the lawyer has fled via a window into the garden. He keeps the renunciation document in his safe to prevent unwanted rumors. If you have any suggestions of which books I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.